All right, so what's your name? Caitlin. Caitlin, where are you from? I'm from Orlando. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Always lived in Orlando? Yeah, until like 2009. How old are you, Caitlin? 25. And how'd you grow up? How was your childhood? Um, I grew up pretty good, I guess you could say. Um, I don't know. I grew up like, I mean, I grew up in the hood. Yeah. You know what I mean? Did you grow up with both parents? No, I had my mom. Um, I lived with my dad for a little bit, probably yeah. like when I was like around six, seven, and then I moved back with my mom. I ain't seen my dad since. Who'd you have the best relation? Well, obviously you had the best relationship with your mom, right? Yeah, yeah. Did you have any type of abuse growing up? Like physical abuse? Physical abuse, sexual abuse. I mean, I've, I've, abuse? I've been I've been molested when I was younger. I got raped, and but not physical abuse. Not until I got a little older. What uh, age did you experience molestation and rape? Um, the first time, I was probably about like eight, nine. Do you remember what happened or who it was? Yeah, I, was, I don't know exactly who it was and how it happened. Yeah. Do you want to talk about it? Nah, not that part. <laughs> yeah. Was yeah. it something that was traumatic for you that it was? I mean, yeah, because, you know, it was like, it was like my stepdad, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So it was like, I don't know, I just didn't understand. Somebody you trusted. Right. Was it repeatedly or did it happen just one time? It happened that one time, but like, I finally came out and told my mom about it when, and like, she didn't believe me or whatever. So it was like, that shit kind of fucked with me. You know what I mean? Yeah. Cause she didn't believe me. She like, why you wait, why waited so long to tell her? Like. When did you tell her? Years later, years later. Were they still together? Mm -mm. No. So you hurt your mom not believing you. How did that make you feel? It hurt me. Yeah. That hurt it. Cause I'm like, why would you not believe your child? Like I'm telling you what happened. You know what I mean? Like you seen I went to acting different towards the dude. It's not, I ain't went to acting different towards him for no reason. You ain't never think about it. Yeah. Like, I'm pretty sure she knew something was going on. She was just in denial. Why do you think she knew something was going on? A mother knows, you know what I mean? A mother would know, like, I have a, I have a daughter. If something happened to my daughter, I would know. Cause my daughter, I know how my daughter is, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, a mother would know something done happened to her child, you know yeah. what I mean? I think she was just in denial or either she was just scared herself, I don't know. Mm -hmm. Can't really, I can't, I, I don't know. I can't really decipher that, you know? I wish she was here with me today though, so I could ask her, but she's not, so. I'm sorry like, to hear that. So what happened with um, rape? You said you experienced rape as well? Yeah, when I was probably about like 14, 15 years old. That's around the time I had first moved down here to Fort Lauderdale. Um, I was staying over there in Pompano Beach. Mm -hmm. Chilling with one of my homegirls, well, my best friend really. And, you know, being teenagers, going out to drink with older boys and shit like that. We went over to this boy house and my homegirl left me there. Like, she left. <laughs> the girl left me there, dog. Mm -hmm. And. It's just crazy. How did all these situations affect you? I mean, it hurts, but I'm the type of person that like, I hold a lot of shit inside. So it's like, I'll put up a smile, even though I'm still hurting, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Just to, like, you know, fake it till you make it, I guess. But this shit hurts. It fucks with your mental. Really bad, for real, for real. 
It fucks with your mental really bad. How did it fuck with yours? Like, what what type of... How did that come out? Well, I just started, like, reacting. Like, I started blaming myself, really. You know what I mean? Like, I'm like... Maybe it's something that I was doing that's why they did that to me. Maybe I was like giving out the wrong signs or whatever, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I wasn't blaming myself for it, but in all actuality, it wasn't really my fault, you know what I mean? When did you come to that realization that it wasn't your fault? Uh, about, honestly, about like a good four years ago. And what was the tipping point? What was the, the realization? How'd you get there? Um, I was in prison, and I went to a church service, and the lady just, like, called me out of everybody who was in there. She just called me out of nowhere and told me to come up to the front or whatever. And, like, she just basically read me my whole fucking story. And the lady ain't know me from a can of paint. Yeah. She read me my whole story. And I'm like, but you're like, it wasn't your fault. You was taken advantage of. You feel me? You ain't know. And that's so why I'm like, you know what? You're right. You're right. So I shouldn't blame myself for shit that people did. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Mm. So you have kids of your own now? Yeah. How many kids? I got two kids. How old? My daughter, she's seven, and my son, he's five. That's cool. And they live with you, of course? Yeah. They're my babies. What's the best <laughs> part about having kids? Oh, just... Watching them grow into being their own little individual people, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, like my daughter, she she she's very like outgoing, outspoken. Mm-hmm. I'm like, dang, I wish I was like that when I was younger. Yeah. You know what I mean? I was like always shy and quiet and shit. But my daughter, she don't give a fuck. She gonna tell you, uh uh-uh. uh. Mm-mm, you smell weird. No, you, mm-mm, you don't look, that hair not good. Mm-mm, no. <laughs> like, she is, shout out. I love her. That's what's up. <laughs> now, you said you, you've been to prison. Um, how many times were you arrested? Um, I was arrested a couple times before I went to prison. But it was all, like, little petty-ass, little misdemeanors, like, trespassing and mm-hmm. stupid shit like that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, Oh, I'm on a, I'm on your compit. I'm on, I'm, like, I'm in this uh, abandoned apartment just chilling, smoking weed and shit with my friends. And, like, the maintenance people come see us. Oh, we calling the police type of shit. Yeah. You know, just a little petty shit until I went to prison, fucking around with the wrong people. That's so when I was like, oh, this shit real. Like, so what was the difference between prison and some of the other times that you've gotten arrested? I didn't stay in jail that long. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I always got right back out, or I either went to the tent and did 21 days and just came home. Nah, this time was different. How long did you stay in prison? I did three years. Three years. What was the toughest part of those three years? Um, being with my kids, like I had just, my son was only a month old when I got locked up. And the fact that when I came home, he was already talking, walking, like, and he didn't know who the hell I was when yeah. I came home. He looking at me like, who the fuck this lady is? Why is she touching me? Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? She's like, he didn't know who I was. But, you know, it's like, my daughter knew who I was, but she wasn't like, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. She had to get used to me because she was only two when I left. So who assumed responsibility for your kids in those three years? Um, their grandmother, my baby father's mom. Yeah, she did her part. She st- she stepped up and did her part. Yeah. Yeah. So how would you describe what you do for a living? What do you mean? How do I describe? Yeah, what do you do for a living? I escort. And how long have you been escorting? I've been escorting for about almost like 11 to 12 years now. Since I was like 14. At 14, do people know that you're 14 when you started? No, they didn't know. Okay, how I got to that part, I was like, my mom, my mom and my dad ended up passing away. My dad passed away in 08, my mom passed away in 09. 
So I moved down here in mm -hmm. December of 09. Mm -hmm. Okay, living with my aunt, me and my sister, we live with my aunt, and my sister decides to go to school one day and tell us the people at school that we're getting beaten at home. They put us in foster care. Who wants to be in foster care? Nobody. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I ran away. Ran away, met this guy named Max, and he's like, well, you want, you want to know how to make some money? Yeah, I'm going to show you how to make some money. Like, <laughs> So he went. To, he took me to this girl name, to this girl Tiffany. He like, yeah, she do this and she do that. Woo, woo, woo. So I'm like, okay. Damn, I'm like, yeah, I see the money coming in. So I'm like, yeah, that shit look good. Yeah, I want to try some of that. Why mm -hmm. not? Now they posted me on back page, and then just started off from there. Do you remember your first encounter? Yeah, it was weird as fuck. Like, cause I didn't really know like what to expect mm -hmm. out of it, you know what I mean? And then the guy was like so old and just like, I just didn't feel good about myself after I did it, but I'm like, the money was good, so I'm, you know what I mean? I just sucked it up and did it after I, after I got done, it's like, I'm beating myself up on the inside, but I'm like, shit, the money here, so. Why I really got to like worry about like just chill, you straight, you feel me? Like you got your bread, you good. <laughs> mm -hmm. But then that's when dudes started acting crazy, like trying to rob the females, like rob the girls, giving them money, snatching it back type shit. Like when that shit started happening, I was like, okay, now this is when shit started to get serious. Then I was like, what the fuck? But I kept on doing it because the money was good. It's not like I like doing it or nothing, but the money good. So what's the hardest part of it? The hardest part? Mm -hmm. Actually going through with the service. You know what I mean? Because like, I'm not attracted to you, dude. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, I don't want to have sex with you. Mm -hmm. You feel me? I don't want you touching me. But I want your money, you know what I mean? And you finna give me your money, but you want something back in return. Right. So it's like, you just gotta suck it up. Have you been approached or been in a situation where you had to do something that you wouldn't normally do because the money was good? Um, I've been approached with shit like that, but I ain't never take it. You know what I mean? I always turned it down. I'm like, okay, it's bad enough that I'm already doing this and I don't want to do it. You know what I mean? So why even dig a deeper hole for myself? What were some of those things that you denied? Like, people running a train on me or like getting fucked in the ass and all this other shit. Like, no, I'm not on that. No, you good, bro. No. I'm not fucking you raw, no, I'm not doing that. I ain't doing none of that, you know what I mean? No, it's good, it's great. It's just gonna, either you want the service or you don't, you go. Right. Like, <laughs> Did you ever imagine that 11 years later, you'll still be doing this? No, no. Nah. I thought I would've been out the game because how much money I was making, you feel me? Mm -hmm. and it was like, I came up, came up good too, came up good, and then, my grandma would ask me, oh, how you making all this money? Mm -hmm. Bitch, I'm still in motherfucking middle school. <laughs> how you making all this money? Where you getting this money from? Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Well, I'm supposed to tell her. Told her the truth. Shit. Yeah. And what happened as a result of that? Then the family started looking at me different. You know? So I s stepped away from the family. I haven't seen my family in, in years. Only people who I talk to is my sister and my brothers. That's it. Mm -hmm. Other than that, I don't keep in contact with them. They're so judgmental, like, you know what I mean? They're like, Haitians, Haitians, you grow up differently. They're too strict, you feel me? So it's like, when you do something that's not in the normal for them, mm -hmm. it's like, oh, abomination type shit. Like, oh, no. Like, bitch, we're casting you out the family, bitch. You're not a part of us type shit. Like, what the fuck you mean, bitch? I'm still me. What the fuck? 
So you said you made a lot of money. Yeah, I made what, a lot. What would you do with the money? <sighs> Stupid shit. Buy clothes. Like. Just stupid shit, not saving my money. And then on top of that, I had drug problems. You know what I mean? I got addicted to drugs. And What drugs? Uh, well, first I was smoking weed and then transpired to pills. And then from pills, I went to smoking flock. Yeah. Now, for those that don't know, what's flock? It's like um, a synthetic molly, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How does that make you feel? What's the effects of that? I mean, it makes it's like it's like it's like a fucking Viagra, honestly. So it helps me do my job better. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Cause like once I smoke, okay, I don't really think about how nasty the guy is or how disgusting it's gonna be. It's like cause I don't smoke this shit and I'm a pussy thumping and okay, we finna get this bread and you finna get the fuck up out of here. Period. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So it was like, okay, fuck it. And the high was cool. You had, I had a lot of fun smoking it though. I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> you still smoke it? Yeah, I do. I do. Is it an expensive habit? It is very fucking expensive. And so that's where that, the money goes to. So isn't that counterproductive though? Because I'm sure you have a goal in this, right? Yeah. I mean, I slowed down smoking that shit because of the simple fact that Okay, I realized that I looked in the mirror one day and I was like, bitch, this is not me. You know what I mean? Bitch, I started losing weight. Bitch, my skin started to break out. My hair went to falling out. I'm like, no, 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 no. This ain't, this ain't me, bitch. This ain't me. My mom ain't raised me like this. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna, like, I try to slow down with me. I stopped. Stopped. Started fucking with this dude. Dude went to cheating on me, beating on me, and then went back to smoking flop to like cover up all the pain and shit. Like, so. Do you have other ways of dealing with pain? Music. What are you listening to? No, I write music. Oh. Yeah, I sing and I write. Do you have any plans for that? Yeah, well, I've been going to the studio. I'm going to the studio Monday night, actually, to drop another track that I had just got done working on. So I'm excited about that. <laughs> That's awesome. I hope that goes well for you. Hmm? I hope that goes well for you. Yeah, thank you. Have you ever had a pimp? I never had a pimp. I had a madam. A madam. Yeah, she was something else. She was... She was, she was, uh, I don't know. When Madea, did you start with the madam? How did you get introduced? Um, walking down the street one day and this lady seen me and was like, oh, you are so pretty. I'm like, oh, well, thank you. You're pretty too, shit. Oh, what you do? Um, what do you mean what I do? You get money? What you doing out here? Like, what you doing? Oh, I'm just chilling, like, <laughs> I'm just vibing type shit. Oh, well, shoot, I'm a madam. That's exactly how she said it. I'm a madam, and I have, I have girls. So I'm looking at her like, um, okay. I ain't really know what the fuck a madam was back then. So right. I'm, like, I'm looking at her like, okay, like, you got girls. Like, what do you mean you got girls? She's just like, you want to ride with me? Me out. I'm gonna go take you to get your hair done and take you to get your nails done. Feel me? And she did all that. And then she took me to the hotel room. And she had a line of bitches with her inside the hotel room. <laughs> I'm like, okay, so this is what it is. It was good at first because I'm like, okay, I ain't really, really had to do nothing because she knew I was young. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So it's like she wasn't really trying to put me out there like that, like that, but she would put me onto like the big money plays, like the older white guys who want young girls type shit. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And then just like she went to like getting weird. She ended up getting a boyfriend and 
that's when shit really started to get weird when this dude came around. So I'm like, no. How to get weird? Like what? Transpired? Like he was like basically convincing the girl, convincing the madam to like, okay, no, you need to discipline these girls. Like you need to show them like you ain't nothing to get fucked up with. You ain't oh, well, hold up, bitch. What you mean? Bitch, you, you ain't playing hands on me. Right. Bitch, you ain't gonna hit on me, bitch. Who? Dipped. Dipped on their ass quick. They thought I had to play. Bitch, who? I told that man straight up, listen to me, bro. I'm not finna date you. Mm-hmm. I'm not finna date you. I'm finna go. Bitch, I'm finna go. He like, what's wrong? I'm steady looking around like, no, listen, listen, listen to me, bro. We gotta go now. Can you give me a ride, please? We gotta go now, like right now. He like, what's wrong? You good? You straight? I'm like, no, I'm not good. I'm not scared. I said, bitch, I'm not supposed to even be here right now, bro. I'm, I'm underage for one. Mm-hmm. When I said that, then nigga said, huh? I'm out of here. <laughs> bitch, you what? <laughs> bitch. He hauled the fuck ass. Left me, bitch. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he the hard ass left me, bitch. I ended up catching the bus all the way downtown. Wow. Went to the beach. And so was that scary for you? Did you, did you feel like you might have had some repercussions for leaving her? Yeah. Yeah, it did scare me. Cause I'm like, okay, what if they end up fucking seeing me somewhere? You know what I mean? And like, try to beat me up and make me come back to work for them. You know what I mean? Bitch, who? I shit. I shift. I shift. I went straight to the downtown, got on the bus, and went, took that bitch down south to Miami. When I went to Miami, I came across this dude. And dude was like, I could tell you young, so I don't know what you're lying for. Like, just be honest with me. You feel mm-hmm. me? Like, I ain't going to hurt you. I ain't going to do nothing. I ain't going to put you in no harm's way. Like, just be honest. You feel me? Mm-hmm. So I told him what the situation was or whatever. And like, he, he, like, he really looked out for me, for real, for him. He looked out for me. And then, I don't know. Like, basically telling me that, oh, I should be his girl. You know what I mean? So, like, then we started fucking around with each other. Ended up getting pregnant. So, that's what really made me, like, go back to my grandma. Mm-hmm. Then, had an abortion. As I had the abortion, I ran away again. <laughs> and just, shit went to getting wild after that. Shit was getting wide open after that. <laughs> wide open. Tell me about the best time of your life. The best time of my life? Um, I could say is when I had met my son father. He's like, he was different. He was like a different person. And I mean, he's he passed away now, but it's like, I don't know. He was my best friend at first, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And everybody, okay, I was living with his girlfriend at, at the time. His girlfriend at the time, I was living with her. His girlfriend was having sex with my boyfriend behind my back. I ended up finding out. Mm-hmm. I got drunk one day and I'm like, okay, shit, we finna get some get back, bitch, fuck that. <laughs> <laughs> we finna get you some get back, bitch. So I called up my best friend. Mm-hmm. Listen, what's up? We gonna feel me? He like, what? You know who you talking to? You know who phone you out? Right. <laughs> like, yeah, bro. Like, bitch, just come to the house, bitch. <laughs> it was only popping ever since after then. Like, he was like, he brought me so much joy. He like, really made me feel like I had somebody who actually really loved me for once. You know what I mean? Like, since my parents passed away. Mm-hmm. Like, he actually genuinely cared. For real. What have you learned about men doing the type of work that you do? Some men, majority of the men, just nasty and don't give a fuck. Just nasty and don't give a fuck. Try to get what you could get up out of a female. You know what I mean? But I came across some men who actually, like, valued a woman. You know what I mean? Who actually, like, okay, listen, baby, I don't even want to date you, baby. Like, 
I'm finna pay you and we could just sit here and talk the whole while. Like actually get to know me type shit. And I still deal with them people to to this day. Like I've I've probably got about like three solid people I've been dealing with since I was like fourteen years old. Wow. Yeah. And like I probably had sex with them probably once or twice. Mm -hmm. Honestly. Other than that, we just sit there and we talk. Like, one of them know my grandmother. Like, help her pay her bills, even still to this day. Mm -hmm. So it was like, these people actually like, they actually helped me, they actually talked to me. Like, okay, this is what you want to do your whole life. You know what I mean? This is what you see yourself doing in the next five years type shit. Like, what you want to do? What you really want to do? Like, Have you ever had a nine to five? Never. Is this something you think you could do? Yeah, most definitely. Shit, I worked in prison for free. Why can't I work for money out here? <laughs> I who I, I will work. I'm a hard worker. Don't get me wrong. Like my, I had a boyfriend who had a car detailing business, and I'm talking about I was out there washing them cars, but more than he was. Mm -hmm. I was dedicated to that shit. What? So I'm like. I feel like job applications, but nobody want to hire a convicted felon. Right. Not with not with the type of charge that I had, you know what I mean? So it's like I still try to, but nobody call. So do you have a plan for getting out of escorting? Mm. Yeah, but right now I'm just really honestly stacking my bread up to like focus on my music. You feel me? Mm -hmm. And once my music gets to popping off, I'll be scared. Like, I don't even have to like do this shit no more. Like, cause I know I'm good. Yeah. Like my music is tight work. Like for real. <laughs> have you been endorsed or been um, listened to by anybody that the public would know? Yeah, I mean, um, I got a few. I got a few songs on SoundCloud. Mm -hmm. And um, like TikTok. Shit like that. So it's like a lot of people they they vibe into my shit, like they fucking with my shit. So yeah, describe your style. Um, basically telling my life story, the struggles that I've been through, you know, with men, with my mom passing away, my dad passing away, betrayal by friends, shit like that, and you know, just thud out that shit. <laughs> Are you seeing somebody right now? Um, no. I honestly I just got out of a fucked up ass relationship. Like I wanna say like last week I honestly just got away from his ass and been trying to stay away from his ass. Because yeah. <laughs> he's 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 toxic. Very toxic. Do you feel like you've lived a good life so far? Mm, I don't feel like I lived enough, you know what I mean? Like, I'm just existing, and I'm tired of just existing. I'm ready to live type shit, you know what I mean? Like, everybody could be existing in this world, but it's like, what you doing in this time? From the time you born and the time you die, like, what are you going to, like, what you going to have to show for it? You know what I mean? So it's like, nah. Nah, I haven't. <laughs> so what are you planning on showing for it? Shit, I want I want a legacy behind me, bitch. I want to leave my kids something, you know what I mean? I want to have my own business. Like, I want to have my own house. Shit, I want to buy me a duplex and rent that bitch out. Like, I have I have real deal plans and goals for myself. It's just that I have to, like, I guess, apply myself more. I am applying myself, but it's like, you know, distractions and shit like that. Yeah. You know, so. Do you write down your goals? Do you put them somewhere? Yeah, I got them written down. I have them written down, actually. And then you go revisit them? Mm-hmm. Scratch them off. Yeah. You know? That's good. That's a good start. Yeah. And I keep journals, too, so it's like... There's another thing um, an older lady had told me, like... Cause she's like, you can't express yourself. You're like, yeah, like, you don't know how to talk mm -hmm. to express yourself. So what you need to do is get you a journal and just write down everything you're feeling. Once you write it down, you gotta 
ball it up and throw it away. Or you can keep it and read it again. Just as, you feel me? Right. So, yeah. I got like a whole bunch of fucking journals. <laughs> Filled up with shit. Back, front and back, front and back. Do you have anyone that you look up to? Mm. No, I don't have nobody that I look up to because everybody I chill around is probably like in the same predicament I'm in or even worse. And I'm younger than all of my friends and they all come to me for advice. You know what I mean? So it's like they really look up to me more. So if I'm, I'm like a role model for them and I'm way younger than them. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Because they're like, nah, you different. You ain't supposed to be out here. Like, what are you doing out here? Like, what the fuck? Are you, how the fuck you get here? Right. So do you work the streets as well? No, I used to. That's how I started, honestly. Walking the streets, <clears throat> jumping in and out of cars. That shit stopped when I met the madam and she told me about Backpage, you know what I mean? So I'm like, oh, I don't have to walk the streets and get into cars with strangers no more? <laughs> <laughs> I can actually talk to them first before, they, before I meet them? Oh, okay, yeah, sounds good. Yeah. Yeah, let's try that. Because <laughs> niggas on the streets is crazy. You ever been caught up in any stings or anything like that? Yeah, when I was 14, I got caught up. In the scene, um, they was doing a, a sting for like young prostitutes, underage prostitutes or whatever. I got caught up in shit because I'm like, okay, I ain't make no money all day. And I finally get a call for $200. Oh, I'm going. Let me go get this money. Child, please. <laughs> they been, they had another story for me. And I don't get it because I'm like, okay, the police officer touched me and all. Like, so how the fuck can y'all get in trouble for this? And this guy was touching on me, bro. Mm-hmm. Like, so as a minor, what type of trouble did he get into? Nothing. I just had to do 21 days in the tent. And then they let me out. And now we're right back to posting. Right. <laughs> um, if you were hosting a dinner, hmm? and if you were hosting a dinner mm-hmm. and you had to invite five people, Mm-hmm. They can be dead or alive. They can be from the past or the present. Mm-hmm. You got five seats at this table. Who would you invite? I would invite my mom, my dad, my sister, and my two brothers. Four places that you would want to visit. Hawaii. Missouri, um, Paris, and Rome. Now, why Missouri? I don't know. I, I've always seen pictures of Missouri, like, you know, like the mountains and shit like that. Like, I'm like, okay, that should look nice. That should look decent. I'm really into nature type shit. So I'm like, yeah, I want to do that. Shit, let's go hiking, bitch. Let's do this. <laughs> yeah. Three tips for the next generation of escorts. Three tips for the next generation of escorts. Do not sell yourself short. Love yourself first. And always put yourself first before anything. Love yourself first and put yourself first before anything. Because if you don't, you're just setting yourself up for failure. Two people you want to see on the show? Mm. Mm. <laughs> Two people I would want to see on the show? Mm-hmm. Um, what do you mean? Like two people you, you would want to sit in the same seat that you are sitting um. in. My friend Dee Dee, she has a story to tell. A very, very interesting story. You know, I think her story needs to be heard. You think we can all learn from it? 
Most definitely. Most definitely. And... This girl named Luna. Yeah. And these are all uh, people that I escort? Mm -hmm. So you, do you have a, a pretty good uh, network of uh, friends? Yeah. In the escort industry? Yeah, I do. Yeah. And you say they kind of see you as a leader, though. Yeah, they like really look up to me. I don't know why, but bitch, they do. <laughs> like, yeah. um, because like I'm the one who's at the group who's like, okay, we all could be getting high, and I don't know where I'll be like. So, what you see yourself doing in the next two years? Like, mm -hmm. type shit. So. All right. Here's the last question. Um, if you had to say one word for the rest of your life, what word would it be? Gratitude. And why gratitude? Because gratitude is really like the way of life, honestly. What you dish out is what you receive. You know what I mean? What goes up must come down type shit. So, yeah. Much love and thank you for being here. <laughs>